Hey guys, this video is just going to be me for today. It's going to be pretty quick. I just wanted to show you how we are making our window coverings. how we are making our window coverings these because we don't really show it in detail in our videos and a couple of people have expressed interest in the comments I want to share it in case you're interested in doing it for your own build but um, we also just thought it would be fun to throw out a little bonus video just because we're really excited to have 600 subscribers and we just want to thank you guys so much this is so cool but yeah I'll show you how to make these so this is what they look like when they're pulled up and hooked in place and this is what they look like when they're down we're going to have a countertop and backsplash that will match up to here, so it should be a little bit more subtle once that's in place. So we just have these fish hooks that you pull up and you hook into place with each other, and then it sits there. And it feels really secure because we cover the entire window frame, even the metal part, a little bit with this um, window covering. It's very black out from the outside, you can't see in at all. And we're gonna put trim pieces right here. So it should be even more secure and private. There's also a layer of reflectics in there. You know those political signs that you see in people's yards? If you have something like that, that would be a really great air barrier between two pieces of reflectics if you want extra insulation. But we just went with one, and I think that'll work for us because it's a little bit expensive. One really important thing to make sure of in your build if you wanted to do these kind of window coverings is to leave a gap behind your wall and whatever you put on the wall, if that makes sense. So I can show you kind of what we mean over here. When we were framing out our walls and putting in insulation, we cut out the aluminum wall of the bus. Whenever we put up the actual wall, this little gap right here is where our window coverings can fit in place whenever you want to push them down. And we really wanted to do that because I like the idea of everything having a home that's kind of the idea behind our charging cabinet. So we have a spot for all of our cables to go when we're not using them. And that's the idea for these window coverings so that when they're not out and being used, there's a convenient place to have them so that they're not cluttering up our living space. That one's a little bit dirty. <laughs> we'll clean it, but, <laughs> but that's the idea is it fits behind this wall. All right. <laughs> It is much cooler in here. It's like 100 degrees outside and 83% humidity, so I am happy to be working on these today. <laughs> the supplies that you need for this are um, some fabric. I got this from Amazon. It's waterproof on one side, so it's like kind of a vinyl texture, and then the other side it just looks like regular cloth. So far I've used 10 yards of this. I ordered an additional five that's right here. I haven't opened it yet. And I think that should be enough for all 16 of our windows. I also have already stained and put three coats of polyurethane on a bunch of trim pieces like this. These are the ones that I use to lift the fabric from above and hook it into place um, and then lower it down. This is just so that there's a nice finish on it and a nice something to grab onto. I also have some fish hooks and lots and lots of reflectics. So I am sewing these. I think because of the waterproof texture on this fabric, it could be really tough to hot glue. I think you'd have to figure out a workaround. I think if you use some combination of duct tape and hot glue, you could probably get it to work without sewing. I didn't know how to sew. I had a little bit of experience from my childhood and my Mima, who was a wonderful seamstress. And so I just kind of got back in the seat. I've been using a sewing machine, Jimmy's mom's sewing machine. Thanks, Debbie. And I'm pretty new to it, but I've made several of these so far without too big of an issue. So I think I've got it. So for the window, I went ahead and measured the window behind the couch for the fabric. On the height, we need to double the height of the window because we're going to fold the fabric in half. If you double the height of the window and then add a little bit of extra wiggle room, that gets us to, we'll say 60 inches. The size of the fabric that I ordered is naturally 60 inches across. So it's really simple to just use the whole height. But as long as it's doubled so that you can fold it over with a little bit of extra wiggle room, that'll get a good height for the fabric. And then for the width of the fabric, you just need to add at least two inches to the width of the window dimension. This is so that there is enough room for a three quarter inch 
seam on each side and just an extra half inch because you can always make it smaller, but once you cut it, you can't make it any bigger. And for the size of Reflectix, it's really pretty simple. I just start out with using the exact dimensions of the window. I usually end up having to cut it down a little bit, but this makes sure that it fits really closely and I don't have to waste very much. So we're gonna cut the fabric to this size and we're gonna cut the Reflectix to this size. And then once we're done making the covering, it should fit our window, which is this size. All right, so I cut the fabric. This is the width of the window, and this should be about the height. So next, I'm gonna pin up the sides and then sew them. So I just finished up sewing both of the ends of this one. The waterproof part is facing outwards, and once I've sewed up both edges like this, I'm gonna flip it inside out. So it kind of looks like this, that's the corner of it. The seam starts to look a lot prettier once you flip it inside out, but you don't see that waterproof vinyl anymore. It just looks like normal, tough fabric. Next, I will cut the Reflectix to fit it. So I'll probably need to trim this down a little bit to get it to fit exactly, but I have found that for the bottom corners, it helps to just cut a little triangle off so that it can fit in that seam a little bit better. So I can already tell that I'm gonna need to cut this one down, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim off a little bit of the sides. This is one of the big windows. They're not all this cumbersome. <laughs> okay. Ta-da! I think that's a good fit. I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit and add some duct tape up here to kind of give me something to sew onto so that the Reflectix is sewed in with the fabric as well. So this is what it looks like after I put up all the little duct tape pieces. So I'm going to push it back into the fabric casing. And then I can sew across the top here and go through the duct tape. So we sewed the top of this one up so it should be ready to staple to this piece of wood. First, I wanna install the fish hooks in this and in the window frame. I'm gonna pick the prettiest side of the wood and decide how I wanna orientate it. I like drilling in pilot holes for all of the fish hooks first because it makes it a lot easier to twist in by hand. These are surprisingly easy to put in by hand, but pilot holes help a lot. So I'm gonna line up the top of the window covering with the wooden trim piece. I'm just gonna staple it onto the board like this. This is probably terrible form for using a stapling gun. Oh, I'm out of staples. <laughs> so this is kind of what the final product looks like. Uh, 
The only thing I would go back and do probably later is trim this edge up with some pinking shears. Ta-da! Nice! We don't have a couch or any kind of wall here yet, but I think this is gonna work. That's pretty blackout. You can't really see around the edges at all. And whenever we put a finished piece of trim here, it'll really be sealed in. I'm sorry if I'm like out of breath. I might have already mentioned it, but it's like 100 degrees out here. I'm literally dripping sweat, even though I'm just standing here. Um, so this is a really great project for this kind of weather because it lets me be inside for a lot of the day. We really like these window coverings. They're a good bit of work because I think I have to make about 16, but not all of them have the wood trim. I really don't know very much about sewing. I haven't touched a machine in like 10 years before this. So this was kind of a new project for me, but that's kind of the theme of a lot of this bus build. We're doing plumbing, electrical. Why not throw on a little bit of sewing? I really hope you enjoyed watching this. If you are new to this channel, my fiance Jimmy and I put out weekly build videos and once we're done with building out our whole schoolie, we're planning on traveling. So if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing. We'd really appreciate it. Um, if you have already subscribed, thank you so much. We're super excited. We just hit like 600 subscribers, which we're just on cloud nine about. I can't believe it we're at this point and I just really thank you for helping us reach that milestone. It means a lot to us. We'll see you on Monday for a normal build video and Jimmy will be with us too. So uh, we'll see you then. Bye. I don't know how to cock a gun. <laughs> I'm trying to make a joke like it's like a gun, but gun safety is no joke. But uh, also I don't know anything about a gun. <laughs> oh man